بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم <coughs> So we're discussing the different types of masadir and first of all we explain that ikhtilaf al-masadir and the masadir having <coughs> different forms is due to two reasons <coughs> one is the sama'i reason or the qiyasi reason sama'i is ikhtilaf al just as different dialects have different ways of pronouncing the same word Similarly, you have different dialects, different tribes, Qabail of the Arabs pronouncing one word which has uh, one verb with two different masadir. And that's Sama'i, there's nothing we can do about that, nothing we can analyze from there. The second reason, second cause for one verb to have more than one masdar is ikhtilaf al-ma'na. It has various meanings and we discussed that and we gave various examples of those. Thereafter, he is mentioning not the difference in the meanings, but he's pointing out that certain forms, for certain shapes of masdar and masadir, they have particular meanings. And one such example he gave was fa'lun and fu'ul. That if you have a thulathi verb, thulathi, mujarrad verb, and it is muta'addi, usually the masdar is fa'lun, and if it is uh, lazim, it becomes fu'ul. Now he's going on to another pattern. And this pattern is fi'ala. That fi'ala pattern, this is used as a masdar for verbs. Now this masdar has one, a few particular uh, meanings. One such meaning is, the, f- the primary meaning, or two primary meanings. One is, ma dalla ala hirfatin aw wilaya. Whatever shows hirfa, what we say here, a profession, a job, uh, uh, a skill. So anything that shows a job, a profession, or a skill, we call this is a hirfa. Or wilaya, it shows guardianship, tutelage, care, custody. You're in charge of something. Then this masdar is expressed using the fi'ala pattern. And there's many masadir here. And you, you, as you see it, you understand what it's talking about. He says like kalhiyaka. So haka yahiku is from Bab Darba Yadribu Ajwaf. The master is hiyaka. And hiyaka is a skill, the, the, the profession of knitting or sewing. Okay? Or weaving. Knitting or weaving. Then he has khiyata. I said khiyata. So khiyata is from khata yakhitu. Is to what? Is to sew. So sewing or tailoring is known as khiyata. Now the example, that's also examples of hirfa, or professions, jobs, and skills. Some examples of, uh, of guardianship and having authority and custody is wikala. So a wakil is a proxy. So having the, being attorney or being a proxy, that job, that skill, that position is called wikala. A wasi is a guardian. So wisaya, guardianship. A jari, is known as an agent, jari. So uh, the office of agency is called jiraya. Okay. Khilafa, the office of khilafa, caliphate, where you're in charge, government. Imara, so Amir is a leader. In more modern day, we call it Imara's principality or leadership, your control of something. Nikaba, I couldn't find a dictionary. He says Nikaba is like you have many irafa. The bottom he says here. If you have many people who have irafa under your authority, you call it nikaba. And irafa is soothsaying or fortune telling. Okay? Yes? Iyala here is government, district, province. Iyasa is siyasatul mal, is what we can say here a ministry of finance or governing or matters of finance. So when you look after or administration of finance. It's called Iyasa. So Asa Iyasa, Iyasa, administration of finance. And general administration is called Siyasa. We generally, we generally translate Siyasa as politics, but politics has a very, it seems to have a connotation of uh, dishonesty and trickery, etc. And selfishness and greed, etc. So, but Siyasa literally means administration. When you look after something. So Siyasa is actually supposed to be, or what we always translate as politics. Siyasa is actually governing and looking after the affairs of those under that office or in the office. 
So siyasa, administration, tijara, commerce, khayat that came before. Qisab, so qassab is a butcher. So qisaba is butchery. And then at the bottom here we have qisara. Qisara, it says bleaching, when you have clothing and you bleach them. Uh, some have, in Rabbi Quduri, they mention it normally only as, as uh, bleaching, but they've also translated it as uh, dying. Okay, but some have said Sibaga is dying. It's okay, you can look at it later on. Si'aya. Si'aya's eye is to hasten. And if you hasten between people to cause what? Uh, to hasten to take one person's message, misinterpret it and pass it on to another person. Take that person's message and bring it back to the first person whilst misinterpreting it. It's called calumny or slander. You, you're, you're, you're hastening between the people. So slander, si'aya. So all of these are... Kind of not professions, but actions and offices and jobs you do. Okay? Yes? And from here he mentions one point, for example. Look, he says there are two masadir. Kitab and kitaba. So kataba yaktubu. Some tribes, as we mentioned before, use katban. But that's the rare form of the master. If you use a kitaban form, that's fine. Like to write. But if you use a kitabatan, this shows not only to write one off, but a kitaba. Like a, a, a profession of scribe, of, of, being, of writing and, and that's your job. That's kitaba. So kitab and kitaba, both master of kataba yaktubu. But kitab is just general writing without alluding or hinting towards its permanency or it being a job or a profession. And kitaba, it was then show that this is what? A job or a profession. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then here, hijaba is from there we get, this comes in Sira quite often, it's hijaba. Is hajaba it literally means to veil something, to cover something. So when you, when you in the olden days, doors were commodities, expensive for doors, many people just have a veiling on their front. And then from there you get the word hijab, I, you just cover yourself and you, you, you bar somebody from entering. So then hijaba is the officer of doormanship. I don't know the right word, of doorkeeping, office of doorkeeping, where you're an authority of allowing people in or not. And then this having the keys to the Kaaba and having the authority to open it for whomsoever you wish or whenever you wish, that became the hijaba. It's a profession, a job, an authority, an office. So the hijaba is also known as sidana. Okay, like an after the, uh, the, the Kaaba. And then from here you have, if you look at these two words, uh, Saqa, Siqaya. So, Aja'altum, Siqaya al Haji, Wa Imarat al Mashil Haram. So, both Siqaya, and here both the verbs, Siqaya and Imara, the master, both are Masadir. And what does it refer to? The office, the job, the position of, the job of give, providing water for the Hujjaj. And Imarat al Mashil Haram, the job of maintaining the building of the uh, Kaaba and the Surrounding area, the Imara. So, Siqaya, I guess they have a history, but Siqaya al Hajj became less insignificant uh, from the time of Abdul Muttalib when he rediscovered the Kaaba. Because obviously, Zamzam is right there in the Haram, next to the Mataf, in the Mataf itself, or around the Tawaf area. So, Siqaya al Hajj then became a bit ceremonious. It was an honor, but it wasn't that difficult. Anybody could go and just get water from the, from the well. But even then, they would, make, they would take it out themselves and the Banu, the Banu Abbas, they would, as Abbas was in charge of this, they would go and take the water out from the well, put it into containers and jugs, etc. And people would drink from it. But before Abdul Muttalib rediscovered the Zamzam, which had been buried by the Jurhum when they left, uh, there was no water source. So when Jurhum were, were evicted from Makkah, their thought was, if we cut off the water source, they won't be able to survive in Makkah, they'll have to leave looking for more water. So they covered up the Zamzam well, so I left no sign of it. And they put some treasure, etc. in the Zamzam as well. They're thinking that within a few years, a decade or so, then they'll have to leave. But it didn't turn out that way. So when the uh, Quraysh and Qusay ibn Kilab, etc., when his offspring were looking after the Hujjaj, water was a big problem, because no, they, didn't, they weren't aware of the Zamzam. So they would have to get their slaves, and other wells which are now defunct after the which became defunct after the discovery of the Zamzam for the second time. 
Before that, they would have to get their slaves and go to these other wells and bring water, or import water, or make arrangements for water. So Siqayat al-Had was a very big issue, a very important office or job before the rediscovery of the Kaaba. So anyway, so Siqayat al-Hajj, providing water for the Hujjaj, and Imarat al-Mashr al-Haram, uh, maintaining the uh, building of the Mashr al-Haram. So this is the, obviously it wasn't Mashr al-Haram, it's mainly the Kaaba, etc. So this is another use of the word uh, Siqayah. Okay.